Now, it's a debilitating condition that affects at least 20,000 Kiwis, but chronic fatigue syndrome is difficult to diagnose and even harder to treat. Our next guest suffered through it at the peak of his rugby league career and he's now keen to help support others. Welcome to the cafe, Richie Barnett. Oh, it is really, really nice to have you here because this is a fascinating subject and I have heard of a few people that have had chronic fatigue syndrome. When did you realise first that you had chronic fatigue syndrome? I had a, um, in 2000, we were training, for, uh, we went from England, I was playing for London and we came back to Australia and we trained there for a while. I got uh, a pretty bad bout of uh, virus. Uh, I was bedridden for about three days and um, I never, never felt anything like it. I uh, started training again and I felt that as time went by, it just wasn't getting out of the system and I thought it was post. So I thought, okay, we'll just keep going, keep training and then progressively it got worse and I was having to be the fittest in the team to now the, the person right at the back with the forwards as well. Yeah. I was sleeping prior to trainings. I was sleeping when I got home uh, and I went to doctors and they said, well, you're okay. And I went to another doctor, they said, you're okay. And so your battle starts. The battle of understanding, the battle of doctors telling you, we don't know what's wrong with you. Yeah, and you know obviously something is wrong with you because you're not yourself. What are some of your symptoms that you have? Just obviously very exhausted. Absolutely exhausted. Um, at times I just wanted to sleep all day. Uh, I didn't want to be around people. You get enclosed, you, you, you tried to stay out of sunlight, um, light sensitivity. Um, but the fatigue was for me was the worst because that was my life. Mm. Um, I was so energetic, I was so upbeat, and now that has been stripped away completely out of your system. It takes away the essence of your life in a, in a split second. And that's what I struggled with. The struggle that you didn't know what it was, two, people couldn't tell you what it was, and three, there was no understanding around it, if you couldn't understand it. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? It's like, mm. if you tell people you've got chronic fatigue syndrome, what do they say? Oh, you're just a bit tired, you're Correct. fine? Correct, it's that type of uh, insensitive behavior that really does crucify a bit, and that's why it's really hard to explain to people because you didn't you didn't mm. have an idea of what it is, but you have to upskill, you have to learn, you have to start reading, you have to start talking to people around. So, um, yes, it's it's the most debilitating illness I've ever had to deal with. I've had some really bad injuries. I've had a facial injury that was so bad mm. um, that it's completely reconstructed. I've had injuries completely all over my body. I've had other things happen to me. My brother's dying. My auntie's. Uh, death, those types of impacts in your life, mm. nothing prepares you for this. Wow. How long did you live with it for? 14 years. The first five years was quite uh, an impact, the di most difficult part of it. How does it affect your relationships and everything? It affects not only your physical, your physiology, your mental, your psychological, financial, your relationships, uh, your friendships. It affects all those that make up who you are. So why do you think it's so difficult to diagnose? Because there's no blood markers, except there is some other illnesses that don't have blood markers in, anyway. So, you, But this one has a wide range. It's like, a, I guess, an invisible illness that no one really knows. They can't. There's no bloods that could tell you that you've got it. So, And there's so many other symptoms around it that, um, that you get with it. So they've got to eliminate those. And it takes a while before they can come back and say, well, it seems like the, the most characteristic about this illness is about the fatigue, the post-exertional um, fatigue. So um, that's when you have to deal with it and managing it and understanding it. So what were some of those other symptoms again? Um, light sensitivity, right. uh, muscle pain uh, and fatigue and lymphatic issues. So these, and it just goes, goes and just it, not feeling the right. The degrees of it is unbelievable. These people that cannot walk out, they cannot wash themselves. They can't, they can't get out of bed, mm. you know, and I sympathise and I, I ha I'm, I'm empathetic towards them. That's why I do the things I do for, the, for, for this illness, because I fear, I fear these 16 to 20,000 people have got it in New Zealand, 250 in, in Europe and a million in the US, but yet we don't really hear about it. And we don't exactly know what, why we get it or how it's, what's on with it. Is there a cure for it? There's no cures, but I think they're doing a lot of work around the biomarkers and understanding. So there is a lot of work invested in R&D. Mm. But what I can say to people that are out there is that the best advice for, for, in my mind would be to get a doctor that understands it first, that's so pivotal, and if, if that doesn't uh, tick the box, then move to another one, and, and, and so you're, that you feel the con connection there. These peer group support out there at the moment, so go and tap into that, and so you're not the only one in the world that they've got, these 16 to 20,000 people in New Zealand. So that just gives you saving face and that, and that ability, that emotional thing that you need to sort out. Um, the connection that you do really need and then really read about it and get your and and people the family members and friends 
they have to really start to understand this illness for the sake of the person that you love the mm. most. It's not just your mate feeling a little bit tired. There's a whole lot more to it than mm. that. It's really debilitating. It is. Hey, well, I think you're doing great work speaking about it and it'll be helping a lot of people watching today. So thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Really, really good advice. And if you need more advice or information about chronic fatigue syndrome, go to the website that's on screen right now.